I didn't even have a chance to go through it, so <laughs> I hope it was it. Old song, yeah. I used to sing all the time. As we sang it for years and years. We receive a lot of mail. I got to work at it to keep this sermon under our clothes at time. We receive a lot of mail. I, every day I get the mail, and it, it, it sometimes surprises me, usually not. I sort through the mail, and I find first an awful lot of junk mail that's just thrown away. A lot of bills, many of them hurt. <laughs> Once in a while, something good like unexpected money. And not very often. Sometimes a very serious warning may come that brings a bit of fear. Today I want to tell you about the scariest mail ever in the Bible that was delivered. It was a message from God to the church in Laodicea that was delivered by John. And I want us to, uh, to look at that message to the church at Laodicea. In the book of Revelation, he's laying out these seven letters to the churches. Uh, he, he goes through all of them. First, the letter is to church in Ephesus. He was complimenting them on their perseverance and endurance. Second, the letter to, uh, to the church in Smyrna. Uh, he says, even though you're poor, you're, you're rich. And he gives the, the promise of the crown of life. To Pergam Pergamon, uh, you hold fast to my name. Uh, to Theatra. I love your deeds, but again, a warning of false teachers. To Sardis, you are a dead church, though you think you're alive. And some of you still are alive, so repent. <laughs> to Philadelphia, you kept my words, and I will be with you. And then, a real scary letter to the church at Laodicea. Let me read from Revelation's third chapter. Um, there I'm going to uh, start in the uh, 14th, 14th verse. And to the leader of the church in Laodicea, write, the Amen and the faithful true witness, the beginning of the creation of God, says this, Yeah, I know your need that you are neither hot nor cold. I would that you were either cold or hot. But you are, because you are so lukewarm and not hot or cold, I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. Because you say I'm rich and I've become wealthy and I have need of nothing, and you do not know that you're really wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. I advise you to buy from me gold refined by fire, that you may become rich and white garments, that you may clothe yourself, and that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed. And I salve to anoint your eyes that you may not see. Those who I love I reprove and discipline. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock, and if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I'll come into him and I'll dine with him and he with me. He who overcomes, I will grant to him to sit down with me on my throne. I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. That's a scary letter from God to a church in Laodicea. Uh, he starts out, you are neither hot or cold. And then strangely he says, because you're neither one, um, I, I, I really wish you were either hot or cold. And because you're neither, have uh, enough to stand up and stand for God or stand for anything else. Uh, you ever prepared for a hot cup of coffee? 
and you wait a little bit too long and you drink it and it's just lukewarm. Yeah. Yeah. Same yeah. thing with a meal. When when the meal's just maybe you've ordered it in a restaurant and it comes, it's been sitting too long, and it's just sort of lukewarm. Yeah. Um, many things are okay, hot or cold. But anything in the middle, you just don't want it. <laughs> God wants does not want a lukewarm church. And he does say it's better to take a stand and be cold rather than to be lukewarm. We don't we need to be careful that we don't become lukewarm Christians. We need to get excited for the Lord and his church. There needs to be excitement for ourselves and for our church. Don't be passive. You know, the world is full of cactus, but we don't have to sit on it. Uh, and there are two ways to climb an oak tree. Sit on an acorn or, stop or start climbing. Uh, we need to start climbing. We need to get excited about Jesus. A minister was asked to conduct the service of a really godless man who was a member of his congregation. The family insisted that a public funeral be held in the church. And this was the brief and powerful sermon preached by the minister that day. Pointing to the coffin in front of him, he said, This corpse has been a member of my church for 25 years. <laughs> That's a good one. Do not be Do lukewarm, it said. <laughs> we need to be committed workers for the Lord. You know, if you're not committed for the Lord, you're really in danger. I'm not sure that we understand that. We are in danger if you're not committed to the Lord. It's either God or the world. Uh, there's a story about a man named uh, uh, M.R. DeHaan. He, uh, he had an interesting morning. Came in, his right eye was swollen shut, his cheek was puffed up as though he'd had an orange in his mouth. <laughs> Upper lip was four times its normal size, and he itched all over. <laughs> the reason is he had been attacked by a bunch of loafers. Loafers. His beehive was full of honey, honey oh. literally crowding out all the bees. There were thousands of them that had clustered on the outside of the hive. They were idle because there was no room for additional honey. And having nothing to do, they just loafed all day at the entrance looking for trouble. He recognized the situation and hastily brought an extra section to give the bees a chance to do more work. But as he removed the cover to place it on top, pandemonium broke out, and the swarm of gentle bees, who had always been gentle, uh, began to attack him. He didn't wear a, a pair of veil, a gloves or a veil because he, they had always been so gentle. Why had this gentle colony become so vicious? And it was because they were idle. As long as they were busy, they never bothered him. But having nothing to do, they were looking for trouble, and they became, became loafers. And I'm afraid some Christians fall into the same category. We don't know what to do with our leisure hours, and instead of keeping busy in God's Word and spending time in prayer and visiting the sick and witnessing to the law, uh, we get in trouble. Like all the bees, they attack the people who are trying to help them. The warning to the lukewarm church and its people, if you are neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. I think you understand, sometimes something's come into your my mouth and it just goes out as fast as it comes in because it's just not good. Here's God saying, since you're just lukewarm, I'll spit you out of my mouth. 
church was soon to be gone without a remnant left of the building because they did not heed to the letter, to the message they received from God. There is not one remnant of the church in Laodicea that has been left. Uh, we need to quit playing church. As a child, I would find a little box and stand behind it and preach. Uh, I don't know if I said anything of any importance, but we played church. We've come to a point we need to quit playing. Quit playing church. We need to say you are rich and need nothing. Uh, I mean, you say you are rich and need nothing. That's what the, uh, the verse says. Laodicea was evidently a very rich church, and I believe that it was difficult and is today to be spiritually rich when your mind is on worldly richness. Actually, you are wretched and poor, God says. Spiritually wretched and poor. You're not rich as far as your spiritual life is concerned. Poor in spirit, blind and naked, spiritually. You're just part-time Christians, and you don't even notice it because you've chosen to be blind. To be blind about who you are and what you are and about your relationship with the Lord. We choose to be blind. We need to wake up and open our eyes uh, to see what our true commitment to God should be. You need to do that. Every one of us needs to do that. Open our eyes and really see what is our relationship with the Lord. Really, truly. And I don't think we think about that near as often as we should. I could go on to that, but I'm not going to. Uh, we need to wake up and open our eyes to see what true commitment to God should be. We, we need to become rich spiritually. Your worldly goods mean nothing to God. Uh, I, I'm sure you heard it thousands of times, but it's still true. You're not going to take it with you. Uh, your money is not going to be buy yourself to heaven. You need to buy white garments or righteousness. And it can be done if you strive, if you struggle, and if you allow God to take the place in your life that he should have. You can become righteous. <laughs> Every single evening as I pray, one of the things I say is, Lord, lead me in paths of righteousness. We need to become righteous people, right with God, doing what he asks, not doing what he says to not do. Then it goes on, and, and we need to be able to see. We need to open our eyes and not uh, be blinded. We need to see our lack of righteousness, because if we truly are examining ourselves, all too often we will find, truly, I am not the righteousness that I should be. There are those among you, it says, that I love. But even those, he goes on to say, uh, I will discipline even those uh, that I love. So repent and get excited about the things of God. Everyone of the letters to the churches had in it repent. Jesus sees our lives and our witness. Uh, even the good need to continue in their righteousness. And then he says, come unto me. I, I like that better in the original Greek. I, I think it's much more translatable uh, instead of come to me. It says, open the door. He's here. Uh, he's here. We don't have to go much of anybody. Oh, 
we have to do, it's like the original language said, open the door of our hearts. Open the door. Don't keep him out. And every one of us do that at times. We just, okay, Lord, I'm I'm trying the best. That that's good enough. Ah. Uh, and then the uh, he says, try to be an overcomer. Try to be an overcomer. In this life, there are an awfully a lot of things we need to learn to overcome. Don't let them sit on you. You sit on them. We need to be alert. Overcoming is not an easy thing. It's not. In my life, I've had to overcome an awfully a lot of things. So have you. And they're not easy. You know, his word never said living the life you're supposed to live would be easy. Never said that. He even said the opposite. That you as Christians will have suffering. But you can become an overcomer because God has given you the power to do it if you'll let him. And then he closes off the passage by saying, he who has an ear, let him hear. In other words, listen up. Create reward is waiting. Are you sure you're going to heaven? I mean, are you really sure? We need to look within ourselves. And we need to become not lukewarm, not part-time Christians, but give our all.